So we are now going to look at the uh, traveling salesman problem uh, using approximation methods. So what happens in approximation methods in contrast to the uh, exact methods is that we compromise a little bit on the exactness of the solution and the benefit is that uh, in return we can get um, a significant reduction in complexity. So the best case dynamic programming approach um, gives us a complexity of O n square to 2 to the power n and uh, uh, the approximation method will be significantly less than this as we will see later on and the reason we have uh, reduced complexity is because basically we are using heuristic based approaches so in these approaches the exact solution is not uh, guaranteed we uh, can do a compromise on that so uh, in terms of the approximation based solutions we will be looking at um, the techniques of nearest neighbor based, based approach we will be looking at the minimum spanning tree based approach and we will also look at the Christified approach which gives us uh, more better results compared to the uh, previous two and the general idea behind all of these approaches is that we usually start with an initially good approximation so we have a a good initial guess and then we can gradually uh, refine or improve that initial guess but as I said exactness is not going to be guaranteed so the first algorithm which we are going to address is the uh, nearest neighborhood based search approach um, basically we have a salesman who starts in a given city any city and uh, then visits the nearest city closest to it and then the nearest city closest to that and it keeps on doing this as long as it does not repeat a visit to a particular city so we can take a look at this example graph uh, comprising of five vertices in fact this is a k5 graph and the associated adjacency matrix is uh, displayed next to it and the uh, associated set based notation is also uh, reflected next to it so we can call this graph as uh, G and we can also have an empty graph called G bar so basic, basically the vertices and edge sets of this graph is equal to null and from this we can follow this algorithm okay so this is there are different variations of this algorithm but this is the most straightforward approach the idea is that we start with any random vertex and uh, when we when we select a random vertex we basically keep on migrating data uh, between the graph G and the graph G bar so when we identify a vertex we can insert it into the graph G bar and we can delete it from the graph G and while the size of uh, the original vertices in the graph G is not equal to zero so basically this is a kind of a flag which we are going to use whether a city is going to be visited or not so while this statement is true we keep on getting the neighbors of a particular vertex and then we proceed into the direction which is giving us the minimum weight H amongst the neighbors of that vertex and each vertex which we find we can apply the same procedure we can delete it from the graph G and we can insert it into, it into the graph G bar so we can do a quick walkthrough of this algorithm uh, by considering this uh, state space okay so basically this represents the different variables which are used inside this algorithm and considering that we start with a random vertex uh, u okay so this is our random vertex supposing that we take the case of a so a is selected and of course that would imply that a has to be deleted from the uh, graph v and inserted into the graph v bar so this would imply that we can place uh, a over here and this has to be removed from this position over here and 
immediately while the, we enter the uh, the while loop we can retrieve the neighbors of a and all of these are candidates so we have b we have c we have d and we have e as possible candidates and if you look at these uh, candidates the lowest uh, cost h over here is considered to be e so we can select e over here and immediately the uh, value e is going to be placed inside the graph g bar so we have e over here and there's going to be line linking both of them together and this e has to be deleted from the graph g and then continuing further the graph g bar is going to be updated again and when we look at the iteration again e is going to become the new u and we consider all of the neighbors of the vertex e provided they belong to the graph g but not to graph g bar so a is going to be excluded from this in a way you can say that this is basically doing a check of uh, repetition so if you have visited a vertex we have to remove it or keep it away from the conventional vertices which are unvisited so again the neighborhood of e is going to comprise of b c and d and when we look at the values we have two five values over here so again any one of them can be selected okay uh, it doesn't make a difference whether you select uh, 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 actually it does make a difference but in terms of the algorithm uh, the value of five between e and b and the five between e and d is the same okay so just for argument sake we can select uh, the uh, b five and that would imply that we have to insert b into the graph g bar and at the same time we have to remove this from the graph g and continuing further the next iteration is going to take b towards the uh, u variable so we have b over here and again we have amongst the different uh, possible candidates either c or d and amongst these c and d we have an option of going to d with 4 so that is basically the minimum cost and d is going to proceed to the next iteration and we can embed the the uh, vertex d on this side and join them together and at the same time we have to erase the d from the original graphs g and the last step so basically the neighbors of uh, d which are unvisited so far so we have c as the only possible candidate and of course since c is the minimum cost so we can choose c over here so in a way we have just completed a kind of a hamiltonian line and we can uh, embed the c point join them together okay so let's move this aside a little bit okay so join them together and we have to get rid of the c as a visited point and from this point we can basically add the starting point and the ending point as a last resort where we can basically say that okay this is the contribution of the nearest neighbor based up and now if we construct the cost of this uh, uh, this uh, tour so ae is 6 eb is 5 pd is 4 dc is 7 and ca is 7 so that's basically equivalent to uh, 6 plus 4 is 10 uh, 10 and 14 is 24 we have the tour of 29 over here but you should take into account that we had faced an option of choosing one of the fives so we had an option of five between e and b and we had an option of five between e and d if we had chosen that uh, edge 
we will be coming across a tour in this manner so when all of the cities are visited we can join them together the C and A part and A and C is basically equivalent to 7 and in this case when we total the values together so the TSP value over here is going to be uh, okay so 10 19 19 and 5 is 24 24 and 7 is going to be 31 so we have 31 as the traveling salesman's problem score in this regard so this is actually quite different in the sense that of course we can see that uh, the previous solution of TSP is equal to 29 is better than the uh, solution which we have over here and we can then have a question whether is it possible to have a TSP value which is even smaller than this well the only way to be sure would be if we know the exact answer to the traveling salesman problem which may not be the case but what we can know from this whole discussion is that we can maybe say for sure that the solution of the traveling salesman problem obtained from the nearest neighbor based approach is definitely going to be greater than or equal to the traveling salesman problem from the exact based approaches okay this is for sure so either if you are lucky we can get the right answer otherwise we may have a different uh, scenario and if we bring this TSP exact to this side we can basically say that okay we can we can have the uh, a kind of a ratio where we if we divide the obtained answer by the uh, exact solution we are going to have a ratio which is going to be larger than one so if if both of them are exactly the same that would imply that we are going to get a one otherwise we're going to get a quantity which is larger than the one and then we have an associated question how much larger than one we need some kind of bound based estimates so generally we know that TSP exact is not known so we don't know whether this approximation ratio is going to be good or bad because we don't know any bounds on it in fact bounds do exist and uh, they are widely uh, discussed in literature and some of the well-known bounds are given uh, right here so uh, uh, one of the popular ones is Papa Dimitri so he has put a lower bound uh, of this ratio to be 1 over 6 log 2 of n uh, Herkens et al. has given the lower bound as 1 over 4 log 2 of n and Rosenkratz et al. has uh, actually given both the lower bound as well as the upper bound so the lower bound is 1 over 3 of log 2 of n and uh, the uh, higher bound is uh, half of log 2 of n so this is basically a ceiling uh, and uh, plus 1 over 2 as the upper bound so I have readjusted the uh, some of our notes uh, and uh, computed some of these ratios. So please note that you can you can you can see that all of these ratios are actually a function of n, where n is the total number of vertices. This could be misleading in the sense that if you look at the edges, the traveling salesman is basically dependent upon the upon the uh, cost of the edges. So uh, just on face value if we take uh, into consideration the ratio so perhaps if we look at the Rosenkratz value so the ratio which we obtained that is going to be at least 0 0.77 of the original value and at most it can be 2.0 so these are actually quite big bounds uh, which we can have okay these these bounds could mean a lot and this could also represent a fallacy so for example we can take into account this this graph and if if, if we introduce some uh, edge weight so let's say we have one 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 all of them are initialized as one apart from these two uh, so we can choose 99 over here and uh, i can choose two over here so if if you are going to follow the nearest number based approach uh, 
we can start with the uh, arbitrary location of A for instance and given the uh, behavior of the algorithm it's basically going to traverse in this direction until it sees uh, that it has an option of going from D to E with a cost of 1 or D to F with a cost of 2 and of course it's going to select E over here and then gradually since it's basically looking at a greedy kind of formulation when it comes to F it has no other option but to traverse this path and as a result we have a total cost of uh, uh, how much is it 99 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we have 1 0 5 cost of the TSP problem over here but we know that this is incorrect so the actual uh, path which should be selected is actually this one over here which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so the the actual value should be 7 and if we plug this into our ratio so 1 of, one of 5 is the wrong answer and 7 is the right answer and if we plug it into the upper bound and the lower bound so this is what we get but this is incorrect because if we uh, solve for 105 by 7 this is going to be equivalent to 15 so we know that these upper and lower bounds are not uh, giving us the right representation uh, for for graphs which have a lot of disparity between uh, the uh, edge quantities okay and this is in contrast to uh, this uh, uh, case where the edge weights are almost uh, okay so the disparity is not present over here but if we take into account uh, the first solution which we obtained here so in that case the ratio turns out to be one and if we take the case of the second case so in this case the ratio is basically and supposing we accept the 29 as an answer so the ratio is going to be uh, a little bit larger than the one maybe 1 point something zero five uh, so it's not bad as a solution but since we don't know exactly the bounds they are open-ended uh, in that case we, we we have some issues and for that we need some better algorithms uh, which can be more clear about about the bounds so the next uh, approach which we are going to consider is the uh, minimum spelling pre-based approach so basically um, if we consider that we uh, have an optimum tour and we can call this optimum tour uh, as TSPO and from this tour if we erase just one edge we are going to be left with uh, a tree or you can say a spanning tree so basically the um, the cost just because we have removed an edge so that would imply that the that the cost of the uh, spanning tree actually let me make this as cost of the optimum tour okay, so this could be the cost of the optimum and since we have a spanning tree it may be possible that we can also have a cost of a minimum spanning tree okay so not every spanning tree is a minimum spanning tree a minimum spanning tree is one which has the uh, lowest uh, accumulative edge cost values and then the idea is that we 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 create an estimate of the minimum spanning tree so basically we start here and from this point we try to find out a mechanism to find out the tour and we end here okay so uh, whether it will be successful or not we will see shortly but uh, basically this is our initial guess and from this the, the initial guess must be good and from this initial guess we have to end over here in order to come up with an optimum tour so we can quickly start with the uh, construction of a minimum spanning tree and uh, it doesn't matter whether we start with Kruskal's based approach or the Prim's based approach so taking into account the Prim's based approach we can have a starting point as A for example because we can choose a random starting point 
and from A we have the smallest edge incident upon it as 6 so we can come down to E over here so there we have it and from E and A the smallest value uh, uh, incident on either of A or E is 5 so notice we have we have two options of 5 so actually we can we can make a parallel construction of another uh, spanning tree so from in one case we have the option of moving from E to D with a cost of 5 and in the other case we have the option of moving from E to B with an option of 5 so either of them are possible and if we are at D then of course the we can see that the uh, smallest edge which is available is basically uh, going from D to B with a cost of 4 and here in this case the 4 is also going to be selected so we can choose uh, D over here with a cost of 4 and then the only um, candidate available uh, with respect to the edges is C and, and the smallest cost is uh, going to be C with a cost of 7 okay so uh, this is the uh, minimum spanning tree let's call it as minimum spanning tree 1 and in this case of course uh, we select the same uh, C with the cost of 7 and let's call this as MST so the total cost of this minimum spanning tree is 6, 10, uh, this is 5, so 10, 17, so this is 22 and of course this is also equivalent to 22 as the cost over here. So from these uh, MSTs we know that we have to construct a tour where we have to visit vertices once and only once and since there is a, a very big search space involved over here as already discussed uh, this is going to be difficult uh, we already know that uh, in contrast if we are looking at edges once and only once this can be solved in polynomial time so uh, f if we are going to solve for edges once and only once we need to convert these both of these graphs into other graphs okay so basically this is the transitioning of moving from the vertices based problem to the edges related problem and in order to make this graph Euler we can see that uh, all of the vertices uh, which are comprising of odd degree they must be converted into uh, their corresponding uh, even degree vertices so from these MSTs uh, from these spanning trees uh, which have just been calculated we need to construct an optimum tour and we know that the optimum tour implies that a Hamiltonian circuit needs to be determined and the Hamiltonian circuit is going to be basically uh, NP it's a it's an NP problem in contrast if we are not looking for a Hamiltonian circuit rather we are looking at an Euler circuit so in the case of an Euler circuit we know that that can be solved in polynomial time so the next approach in the um, uh, in this heuristic uh, is to convert the problem from a Hamiltonian to uh, an Eulerian circuit and the way to do that is to basically run a depth first search on these trees which we have so in order to do this we need to uh, identify we need to identify a rooted uh, vertex over here and it can be any vertex so for instance if we take the case as D as the root then in that case we can realign the tree in this manner where we can say E is here B is here C is here and of course A is considered to be over here so this is the uh, rooted uh, tree structure for the first minimum spanning tree and for the second one actually it will be simple if we choose A over here because in that case the rooted uh, tree is simply going to be A, E, B, uh, D and C and now we can notice that uh, the way in which this can become an other graph is that if we run a depth first search on this algorithm we are going to have D 
followed by E A so basically from A we move towards E again and from E we move towards D followed by B let's move this aside a little bit and from B we can then move towards D again so this is the traversal and then we have C and then we have D again and the same case so if you are going to look at the sequence we have A followed by E B D C and then coming back we have to notice that we are looking at all of these uh, uh, representations so from C we can go to D B E and A and so we can see that this is actually a tour a tour which starts at D and ends at D and here a tour which starts at A and which ends at A and now we can look at a very important property so this is basically the uh, considering distance as a metric and if we say uh, if we are at a point A and we move from A to B and from B to C uh, and if you consider that this distance is uh, summed up so the, the, the total summation of this distance is going to be larger than if you were to move directly from A to C okay so basically what it implies here, here is that rather than going through the lo longer route simply go through the shorter route which is uh, A to C and we can see this this property over here a number of times so for example if you take the case of D we see that uh, D is occurring multiple times in the sequence so rather than uh, going from E to D and from D to B we can apply the same logic of this 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 metric based approach and we can say that we can jump directly from E to D so D can be skipped uh, in this manner and and in, the, in this manner all the re repetitions can be skipped uh, altogether so the actual movement which we can uh, consider over here are uh, basically uh, I'll change the color so we go from D to E and from E to A so since A E is a repetition we get rid of it since D is a repetition we get rid of this so we can jump directly from a to B and again D is a repetition so we go from B to C and uh, okay so this repetition is allowed because this is the first and the last node so we can come from C to D okay so this is the movement which is taking place and in similar manner we can we can look at this uh, uh, Euler representation also and maybe consider that we can move in a direction from a to E, E to B, B to D, D to C and since all of these are repetitions we can jump from C to A directly and if we reflect these uh, these these movements over here in the original minimum spanning tree so let's let's see what is happening so we move from D to E so basically this is uh, this edge over here we move from D to E from E to a and then notice we go from A to B so notice that the uh, minimum spanning tree which we had was used as an initial approximation and now we are in a way trying to improve upon the solution which we already had and from B we can move directly to C and from C we can come back to D as the as the starting point and the same case over here so we already have this we have a movement from a to E from E to B from B to D from D to C and the last one is basically moment from C to A and plugging in the values so the the cost from A to B is uh, the cost from A to B is 9 and the cost from B to C is also 9 and here the cost from A to C is 7 so if we if we can total this uh, cost together, we can take the case of the uh, the cost of the approximation one. So the approximation one is actually computed from the minimum spanning tree one. So we can add these uh, red lines together. So nine and two is eighteen and six and five. So this comes out to be 
equal to 36 over here and if we do the same case of the approximation score of CA2 so in this case we have uh, 22 and uh, we can take the case of uh, 7 so 22 and 7 is 29 and these are the two uh, options which which are available to us and we can compare this value actually with the um, with the previous approach of the nearest neighbor so we, we can notice that we had a TSP score of 29 as the as the lowest value and if we take the case over here so this is referring to the same score uh, of TSP is equal to 29 so we can uh, compute a similar uh, approximation ratio just like we had the uh, case for the TSP from the uh, nearest neighbor based approach. So we can say that the traveling salesman problem from the MST based approach, if we have a mechanism of finding out the optimum uh, based approach, okay, so if we have the exact, so in this case, take into, into account that the uh, score is uh, uh, from the f okay so this is 29 by 29 supposing that we accept the value as 29 so this is equal to 1 but if we get, take the case of 36 divided by 29 over here this is actually uh, uh, not as good as the uh, nearest neighbor approach but uh, so this is this is going to be almost around uh, um, we can say around 1.22 or maybe 1.25 something like that. So um, so we see that the approximation ratio over here uh, is 1.25, whereas in the previous case the approximation ratio was on, uh, around 1.05 or or something like that. So um, re related to the bounds. We can actually make some some estimates. So, for example, if we if we identify that when we were uh, so 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 basically when we were uh, looking at this construction of the depth for search, you can notice that we added some some additional uh, uh, edges into this graph. So, in fact, how many edges were embedded? It's for almost for every edge which you have you insert one more edge per that edge so you you can take the case of both of these cases the edges are actually twice the number of edges inside the minimum spanning tree so so basically what we, what we are trying to say over here is that the the cost of the minimum spanning tree if you were to multiply it by two that is going to be equal to the cost of the Euler graph and from this we can imply that uh, if you want to okay this is not difficult to determine but basically we we can see this expression as 1 over 2 the cost of the Euler graph so this is the first observation which we can have and since we know that the cost of the minimum spanning tree is less than the cost of the spanning tree we can apply that concept over here so the cost of the minimum spanning tree is less than equal to the cost of the spanning tree and if we plug in these values that would imply that the 1 over 2 of the cost of the Euler graph is less than the cost of the spanning tree. So some some more properties can also be discussed so uh, let me move this over here. Okay, so the third uh, thing which we can observe is actually the approximation cost. So we we know that uh, when we constructed uh, the w when we applied the metric dimension concept over here so our uh, approximated tour is going to be actually less than the cost obtained for the Euler graph so so from that we can apply that if we have an uh, uh, approximation what symbol did we use okay c1a or so so if you have cia that is actually going to be less than the uh, cost of the Euler graph and and from this uh, the cost of the Euler graph is 2 MST so we can basically say that uh, C I A is going to be less than equal to 2 C M uh, C M S T so basically 
1 CE is equal to 2 CMST so so uh, taking this expression further we can basically derive an expression where we can say CAI divided by uh, 2 CMST that is basically less than equal to 1 and in similar manner okay so let's number this uh, so in a similar manner we can take the case of 4 over here we can say that of course uh, the CIA approximated value is actually larger than the actual optimum tour so this is the exact tour which we can have and this can also be converted into ex an expression so CIA so this is the same as the approximation ratio which we have obtained for the other uh, terms of the nearest neighbor and the minimum spanning tree and we can basically say that this is less than equal to 1 and we can then uh, in a way you can say that we can join all of these expressions together so all these expressions when we join them together we can basically have these uh, uh, higher bounds and the lower bounds as the optimum divided by the C a i this is actually going to be less than equal to the c a i uh, divided by the 2 c m s t and of course this should be less than equal to 1 so this is the fifth expression which we can obtain for as the uh, lower bound and the upper bound but the important part over here is the upper bound so if we if we come back over here and we look at this uh, if we look at this uh, expression this is basically telling us that the tour which we obtain okay so this tour which we obtained this tour is going to be uh, in the worst case twice the cost of the minimum spanning tree so the last approach is basically the Christophides approach the Christophides approach uh, in fact the starting point of the minimum spanning tree and the Christophide uh, approach is uh, actually the same in the sense that Christophide also works with the uh, minimum spanning tree so we can just retrieve the minimum spanning tree uh, com com computed from the last approach uh, in this in this manner over here so the next step would be is that we have to identify all the odd positioned uh, vertices so we have to put it into a set so this is going to comprise of a b so the degree of uh, um, uh, d vertex over here is uh, is 3 so we can place d over here and lastly we can place c over here and you can notice that the odd degree vertices are of an even quantity okay so uh, likewise we can compute the uh, set over here which is going to only comprise of a and c and on the basis of this uh, members of the set we can construct a, a fully connected uh, you can say uh, representation which is going to take into account that a b d c are all connected to one another and we can bring in the 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 edge values okay the same the same is going to be the case over here so um, we have to construct a full graph comprising of a and c and we can plug in the value so the a b cost is uh, 9 the cost of a to d is 8 the cost of b to c is 9 the cost of a to c is 7 the cost of b to d is 5 and lastly the cost of d to c is 7 over here so um, and of course a to c is 7 over here also so what we need to do is that we need to take this and construct a, a kind of a perfect perfect matching and in this uh, perfect matching we have to uh, imagine two two sets so in the first case we have uh, the smallest edge over here should be actually 4 so uh, let me zoom in a little bit db db is actually db is 4 
so we can we can we can fix this actually so let me erase this part okay so we can place db as 4 and we we place this uh, this quantity d and b over here comprising of the first uh, you can say the matching of minimum cost over here and then the second value since since d and b are now utilized we we don't have the option of uh, using anything else so the remaining vertices we we are left with is ac so we can basically plug in a and c over here with a cost of 7 and in fact this is the uh, uh, smallest possible matching the perfect matching which we, which we can which we, which we can uh, construct for for these pair of vertices and uh, it, since we have ac over here over here so basically the perfect matching is really a and c comprising of 7 so so that is that is done with and the next step is then basically that we have to perform uh, uh, we have to obtain a new graph and this is also going to be an Euler graph um, and this is going to be constructed by the edges belonging to the perfect matching union the edges belonging to the minimum spanning tree and as a result I'll, I'll, I'll do this part over here if you are to include DB inside this this graph this would imply that we have to albeit it, it is going to be a parallel edge but that is perfectly fine uh, it it serves our purpose so we can place db from this perfect matching into into the case over here and the second one is basically ac so a c is going to be plugged in over here and of course their associated values of 7 and 4 they are also going to be introduced over here and in this case we also have to do a union so in that case the union would imply that we have to uh, take into account this AC cost of 7 and include it into the original graph obtained for the minimum spelling tree and now the idea is that we have to apply the same distance based metric approach and we have to construct an Euler graph so in this case the Euler graph which we, we can start anywhere okay so basically the Euler graph which we which we can construct is um, uh, starting with a going towards E going towards D from D we can move towards B and then D and from D we can move towards C and then it ends at A and likewise if we notice that this is already uh, A E b d c and a okay so these are the two two options which we have and applying the distance metric based approach so the kind of movement which we are actually looking at is a to e e to d d to b so this needs to be skipped we have to move directly from b to c and then from c to a and of course this is perfectly fine we don't have to make any uh, skips over here it is all already in the lowest possible uh, distance uh, metric representation and these uh, traversals which if we if we plug them in over here so this is going to be AE followed by ED from D we have to move towards B and from B we move towards C and then from C we move towards so um, notice that uh, some 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 uh, new additions have taken place, and we can take into account these costs. So, for example, the cost of B C. So the cost of B to C is nine, and we can construct the uh, cost. So here, the cost of the crystallized approach on the basis of the minimum spanning tree one is going to be equal to uh, we have 7 plus 9 uh, plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 so this comes out to be 10 19 24 31 so this is 31 and if we take into account this uh, uh, traversal so this is our tour and since this is 22 plus 7 so this comes out to be uh, the 
cost of the Christified algorithm on the basis of the second minimum spanning tree is basically equal to 29. So what can be observed from here is that if we construct the ratio, so so here the ratio is basically uh, the the CCA one divided by the optimum tour. So uh, supposing that we accept the 29 as an optimum tour, so this is the CO. So that is going to be equivalent to 31 divided by 29, which is the same expression which we obtained over here. So 29. Uh, this is uh, 39 divided by 29. So this is around 1.04 or 5. We can we can plug this in over here. And notice that the interesting thing is that if we compare the Christophytes approach and the minimum spanning tree based approach, so basically the starting and the ending point of both of these algorithms are the same. But when we when we considered the um, approximation, we obtained 1.25 over here, whereas over here we are obtaining 1.04. So this signifies that the Christophyte approach is better in terms of uh, the accuracy of the traveling salesman problem compared to the minimum spanning tree based approach just by replacing the uh, depth first search with the concept of the of the of the perfect matching in that we do know that the uh, basically the the uh, cost of the ca based approach the crustified approach is going to be uh, greater than the cost of the optimum based approach but by what order well the literature says that this is this is going to be uh, to the order of CFI should be to the order of 3 by 2 CO okay so so it's it's much better than than the nearest neighbor uh, than the minimum spanning tree based approach where we were looking at uh, 2 CO as the as the uh, consideration so um, that's it about the uh, traveling salesman problem using approximate based solutions. Uh, you will recall that in all of these three different examples we were looking at uh, uh, multiple solutions and we, we noticed that uh, uh, in both of the in all of the cases we were able to uh, obtain uh, the correct solution depending upon the chance that the starting seed in the form of either the nearest neighborhood based approach or the minimum spanning tree uh, so it really depends upon the starting seed and that starting seed uh, can uh, allow us to get the right answer of the TSP or maybe perhaps the wrong answer of the TSP so thank you very much goodbye